All right, everybody, we're going to go and watch another Nick video. Uh, the fat electrician, you know, I love uh, watching his content. This is his secondary channel, though. This is the fat files where he's not going to be talking about uh, military history. This was the first video that he put up on this secondary channel, the fat files. And if you aren't subscribed to that, I suggest you go over and one, you'll see in the description a link to the fat electrician and the fat files subscribe to both of those this was his first rant and he said well this really isn't about the military so i'm going to start a second channel and that's what he did and i thought this was just funny as hell um so here we go we're going to let nick talk to us about the way he thinks the government's messing up so here we go this is probably going to come off pretty political but i promise you it's just me being anti-bear <laughs> okay, I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't like bears. Anytime bears are involved, it's not going to be a good time. The okay, revenue. Chicago Bears, terrible football team. A bear market. That means the economy is doing bad. And then you have grizzly bears, which are absolutely terrifying. So when I wake up one day and this is in the headlines, obviously I'm going to get a little bit upset, okay? It reads like I'm living in the Hunger Games. Basically, <laughs> the capital is going to start systematically releasing grizzly bears near rural communities. I'm not about it. But like an adult, I realize that news headlines are pretty misleading, so I read the entire article and it's, no, it's it's pretty accurate. Basically, the federal government wants to release seven grizzly bears every year for the next who knows how long into this area in Washington state, and they want to get that number up to 200 grizzly bears. Which brings us to the obvious question, why, why, why the fuck would you do that? <laughs> and I have looked and looked for an answer to this, and as far as I can tell, the only reason they want to start reintroducing bears into this part of the country is because... Fuck it, bears used to live there and bears are cool, I guess, is what their strategy is. Which, first of all, no, no, they're not cool, okay? This isn't a fucking Disney movie. That's not Baloo talking about the bear necessities in the forest. That's a 700 pound meat missile covered in fur that can run 35 miles an hour that eats its prey ass first, okay? And there's nothing cute about that. Do you understand the gravity of what I've just explained to you? Brock Lesnar weighed 265 pounds when he was the world heavyweight champion. This bear is equivalent to three three Brock Lesnar's running at you at 35 miles an hour. And to put that into perspective, Usain Bolt tops out at 27 and a half miles an hour. Okay, the average American can't outrun heart disease. We're definitely not gonna be outrunning fucking grizzly bears if it comes to that. And I can hear the comment section already. Oh, you know, actually, bears are more scared of you than you are of them. No. Oh, no, that's not true. That's some shit your dad told you when you were seven years old on your first camping trip so that you would shut the fuck up and go to sleep so he could bang your mom in a tent, okay? That's not reality. And then you get all the environmentalist people, but, you know, the ones that live way far away from this area because environmentalists never advocate for shit when it's actually in their own backyard and it affects them. But they're going to say some shit like, oh, you know, the... Humans eradicated those kind, gentle creatures, and they used to live in that area, so we should really bring them back. No, okay, we used to have dinosaurs too, and there's an entire movie series about why bringing those back <laughs> is a terrible idea, okay? Maybe we got rid of it for a reason. Have you ever thought of that? Because last I checked, the easiest way to get a city named after you on the West Coast is to get killed by a grizzly bear, and then they just name a city after you. And then we have to address the elephant in the room, because whether you're left, right, or center on the political spectrum, you have to admit that there is an extra layer of comedy in the fact that Joe Biden, of all presidents, wants to start releasing grizzly bears. Okay, look, I'm not a political analyst or like somebody whose opinion you should take very seriously, but I do think it's kind of bad taste to on one hand be like, I want to ban powerful guns because I don't think people need them. Also, I'd like to start releasing grizzly bears indiscriminately. Okay, look, I don't ever want to get asked why I need a high capacity magazine ever again. There's never been a better excuse to have access to a lot of bullets than the federal government colluding with grizzly bears. I mean, this has to be a joke right like somebody at the white house is just being petty like uh, these goddamn gun nuts want the right to bear arms we're gonna give them the whole fucking bear okay look regardless of whoever's in office whether it's a democrat or a republican all i'm saying is that the federal government can't do anything without fucking it up okay this is a terrible idea you know what let me give you an example off the top of my head in 1920 the united states government banned alcohol okay and overnight every bar in the country either had to shut down or get turned into an ice cream parlor so a bunch of them did and then you have all these people that would hang out with their buddies at the bar 
and now they're hanging out at the ice cream parlor. So in many ways, ice cream filled the social gap left behind by alcohol. Got that? Okay, wonderful. By 1924, people didn't quit drinking alcohol as much as the US government would like, so they decided that they were just gonna start poisoning alcohol and giving it out to Americans. Yep, 41 they did of them that. died for sure. Some estimates go up to as many as 10,000 being poisoned. Okay, fast forward, 1933, prohibition gets phased out, but you have an entire generation of children that grew up eating ice cream every day because it was the social bond that held America together because it had replaced alcohol. So the United States government needed to have a bunch of milk because they were going off to World War II and all their soldiers loved eating ice cream and frozen dairy treats. This is why to this day, every Navy ship has an ice cream machine on it and it's like mandated by naval code or whatever. And because the US government needed all this ice cream to feed their army, they needed a bunch of milk to make that ice cream with. And dairy farmers weren't even a thing yet because refrigeration had just come out and it had never been feasible for one man to just harvest a bunch of milk from a ton of cows. It had never been done before in human history. And at first it works out great, okay? Fast forward, World War II ends, the Allies win, the world is saved from the Nazis and the Imperial Japanese, Hooray. Now, the army went back home, they can buy their own ice cream, and these dairy farmers don't have anybody to sell all this milk to, and the government's not about to let the dairy industry just collapse, because they're the ones that convinced all these people that they had to become dairy farmers in the first place, so the government is like, fuck it, I'll buy all the milk. And then the government's like, what do we do with all this milk? And somebody says, hey, let's turn it into cheese, that way it can sit on a shelf for a little while without going bad. Then, all this cheese started stacking up, and they're like, fuck it, we're just gonna go hide it in a mountain in in Springfield, Missouri. So that's what they did. They just kept shoving cheese into these caves every year. And every new president that came in, they're like, he has to sit through the briefing where they're like, yo, guess what? Uh, the US government is buying all this milk, turning it into cheese. There's a mountain of cheese in Springfield, Missouri in real life. It's a thing. And we can't stop buying the cheese. We don't know what to do with it. Then Ronald Reagan gets elected and he's like, we're spending a million dollars a day in refrigeration for a bunch of cheese that nobody's eating. We have to get rid of it. So he proposes to the US people, hey, hear me out. I've got 500 million pounds of cheese. I want to throw it in the ocean. Okay. They get mad and they're like, no, we paid for the cheese. We would like the cheese at a minimum. You've taken our money. You've turned it into cheese. Give us the fucking cheese. Okay. It's a relatable human emotion. So the government cut up all the cheese into five pound blocks and started handing it out to people. And this is where government cheese comes from. Okay. So that goes on for a while. Fast forward, Bill Clinton ends up getting elected and he's like, I have an idea about how to solve this milk cheese cave situation conundrum. I'm going to go to the FDA. I'm going to have them form an offshoot nonprofit company known as DMI. Dairy Management Incorporated, except this isn't going to be a nonprofit where like they take charitable donations. No, no, we're going to make it a legal requirement for every dairy farmer in America to give these people a portion of their money so that they can advertise for them because apparently milk and cheese isn't good oh, enough on its got own. Milk. Like, if you're not picking up what I'm putting down, I'm trying to tell you yeah. that the Got Milk ad campaign that was in every school cafeteria for like three decades is a government funded psychological operation to convince people to drink more fucking milk because the US government fucked up buying ice cream in the 1940s. And now they want me to not own guns while simultaneously trusting their ability to systematically release fucking grizzly bears. <laughs> that is without a doubt the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Okay, I'm done. I need a beer. I gotta go. Um, thanks for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over the fatelectrician.com. Quack bang out. I tell you what. I'm probably never gonna upload this video, but we'll see what happens. Oh, you did it. You uploaded it. All right, folks, there you go. That's Nick. Uh always a good time watching him uh do these videos. He always has a a fancy reaction and a lot of people say man i he, he talks so fast i've got to watch him a couple times well that's good that's that's running his watch hours up like i said if y'all haven't uh gone and joined subscribed at his channels please do so uh there again they'll be linked in the description i'm sorry i'm doing a reaction video this week my plan was to go and do some crabbing with a friend on the coast but I had uh, some dental work done and I'm still sore from that. And I don't know if y'all have heard me coughing, but I got a little summer cold going. So I said, man, I'm just going to have to do a reaction video this week. I'm, thanks for sticking around and watching this. Uh, and if you've made it this far in the video, if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do so. It helps us out. Y'all have a great week and we'll see you next week.